Hey everybody, it's Tiffany from Quilters Workshop. Today we're going to be doing a video on how to make a deco mesh and burlap fall wreath. Uh, this is the first time that I've made a deco mesh wreath and the annoying thing about this fall and every season from now on is that because we recently moved, as you may have seen in some of the more recent videos that I've been posting uh, since the summer, um, we have two doors now um, instead of one and I only have obviously one wreath per season. So I did have a fall grapevine style wreath from several like previous falls that I've been using over and over again for many years. And I just kind of thought since I was going to be making a new one instead of trying to match um, exactly what I had from before. I thought it would be fun to treat myself to some new a new set of wreaths. So I made this first one and I wasn't planning on filming a video on it, but I just kind of thought that I would also because I think I've mentioned before, I sometimes use these videos as little video diaries for myself. So if I was ever uh, going to be doing one in the future and I wanted to remember how I did it, um, it's a good reference for me personally to have. So this is the first one and I'm going to be making a second one that looks exactly like it, hopefully. So the lighting isn't going to be that great, but I'm just gonna go with it. It's just a casual video. So the base of my wreaths I bought at the Dollar Tree, these are 14 and a half inch wire wreath forms. And the first thing that you're going to do is tie on some pipe cleaners. So there's two per section, each little, like from here to here on the wreath, there's two. There's one on the inner ring and there's one on the very outer ring. And the pipe cleaner doesn't have to be exactly the same color as your deco mesh, but I ended up finding green because even the green deco mesh that I found was actually from the Christmas section. So I found this at Dollarama. It was $2 and it's uh, 21 inches wide and there are 12 feet on there. And for the first wreath that I did, I used one whole roll to make one. So if you're only making one wreath, then you only need one roll. And I think this is a really good deal because I know that this runs a lot more expensive if you get it from Michaels. And then I'll just quickly show you the contents that are in that other wreath that I've already shown you because this is what I'm going to be using. Um, the burlap is a burlap garland also from Dollarama which was three dollars but you get 10 yards of it. It's five inches wide. I had originally purchased two because I wasn't sure how much I was going to need. I've never done a deco mesh wreath before like I already mentioned so I wasn't quite sure uh, how much and I didn't want to go back to the store and for them to have no more of this color left because um, I found this from the Halloween section and they had orange and black and purple, but they didn't have very much left of the natural color. So I picked up two and that over there is what I have left from the first one. So I know for sure that'll be enough for me to do the second one. So I'm thinking I might do some Christmas wreaths and just use burlap. Maybe I'm not sure. Then I got these miniature Scarecrows from the Dollar Tree as well. They came on little dowels that you could use to insert into like planter pots or your garden or anything like that. Um, and I got my boyfriend to cut that off for me so that I could um, just allow them to hang freely, I guess. And then I have the exact same variety of silk flowers and leaves, and these are all from the Dollar Tree. And then I also have a sort of like a statement flower, I guess, sort of like a glitzy, um, like an eye catching piece. It has a little clip on it as well. So you could use it for several things, but this I bought at the Dollarama for a dollar by itself, which was a little bit of a splurge. And then I have ribbon, two types. I have sort of an orange burlapy type, and then this really beautiful sparkly one with the pumpkins and I think this one was from the Dollar Tree and this one was from Dollarama. They're both wired edged which makes them easier for floral arranging and bow making and things like that and I believe I cut them 12 inches. This is about two and a half wide ribbon and then I've already gone ahead and folded them like this and cut the little points out of all of them and obviously they're not super accurate because it doesn't really matter. So I have 
um, I think eight pairs of those. So I ended up using one, I think just one roll of each. I bought loads of extra, so that's why I'm forgetting. I am balancing you on top of a shoebox. So hopefully you can see okay and hopefully this works. So I found that this was actually a lot more annoying to work with than I imagined. So what you do to start is you scrunch up the bottom and try to keep it as even as you can. And see, it's so annoying because not only does it catch together, but it also like pulls diagonally. So you're going to try to keep it as straight as possible. Scrunch that all up the bottom so that you have a nice little poof happening. And then what you're going to want to do is just pick somewhere to start. So hopefully I'm in the shot, but I'm going to start on the inside. I'm going to leave myself a bit of a tail so I can bring that around to the back of the wreath after and tuck it in. And you're just going to want to twist the pipe cleaners together like this. And they do look a little funny and they will stick up a lot, but they'll come in handy as you go around. Then I just unroll a good amount of that. And now what you're going to do is you're going to go one direction, make your way around to your next pipe cleaner. So for me, that's this guy here. So you're going to shift your hands down the netting a certain amount. You kind of have to play with it. I guess it depends how many like bubbly loops you want. And also I suppose what size um, wreath form you have as well. So I'm going to go down probably about that much, I guess. And then once you're where you want it to be, you're going to just wrap the pipe cleaner around it and squish it down because you want those like down and up so that it helps, I guess, make it seem like the bubbles are bigger. I'm horrible at explaining this, but hopefully you get the idea. Now the good thing is that it doesn't have to be too accurate because this stuff can be sort of blended and uh, fluffed once you're done. I feel like when I was doing the first one, and even now when I look at it, I'm kind of wondering if it looks really good or if it looks kind of tacky. <laughs> So that, shift down, make another bubble. That one's kind of small, so you might want to fluff it a bit. And I guess you can make these as full as you want. Like if you wanted to do multiple colors of this, um, I guess I didn't really explain, but I initially wanted orange deco mesh. I had seen it at the store prior to deciding that I was going to be making a new fall wreath. And then when I went back to get it, it was all gone because I'm a little bit late to the game this year and the fall stuff has pretty well come and gone. The Halloween stuff is pretty picked over at this point and it's only the beginning of October. Um, and I'm like talking like I was buying this stuff on like October 1st <laughs> um, and the Christmas stuff is out and people are buying it already. I noticed that a lot too. So um, luckily they had just put out the Christmas deco mesh and this green I thought was pretty pale and I thought blending in the uh, burlap would help it look a little more fall. And then I was also kind of thinking before I bought it, like, well, if I do green and then a lot of my decorations are oranges and browns, then maybe they'll stand out better than the orange deco mesh that I originally wanted. So we will see. All right. So then when I came back to the beginning, I made another poof and I tied it in to this pipe cleaner, which we already use. So this is the pipe cleaner that I used the first time that we went around. So now it looks like that. And then now you can keep going. You don't really have to cut it. I guess you cut if you want to, but you can just do around the outside roll now. 
using the exact same technique. So you're just going to grab a puff of it, check what section I'm working in. This one here. Okay, so now we're gonna take half of a pipe cleaner and a pair of our ribbons. So I'm gonna take one orange one and one printed one. And I'm gonna fold it in half like that and feed the pipe cleaner through and scrunch this. And this part, it doesn't really matter how you do it. Give that like one twist and then you're going to take this and now you're going to put these in the gaps that you have in your wreath. So I think I did about eight pairs. So for example, I would shove one down in there and then you can kind of like fluff these out as you please. I sort of did them all differently. So I've got all of them placed uh, evenly all around. So I've got six pairs, not eight. I think I said eight earlier, but six. And once I've got it placed, I'm going to push the pipe cleaners that are holding it together down through the form. And then on the underside, I'm going to grab those ends. So it's these ones right here. And I'm going to just twist those together so that they're all secured to the base. Okay, so now that I've got all of those little bits in, and fasten down. I'm going to just look at the one that I already did next to me and sort of place everything on. I like to do this before I hot glue just so I get a good sense of where everything needs to be. So I've got everything placed on how I think I want it so that it looks pretty much like the mirrored image of that one. Like that's sort of what I was thinking when I was working on this one. I started to put the sunflower on the left hand side and I was going to build that same shape but I think it will make more sense like on my doors to have the flowers on the outsides sort of mirror image each other. So now I'm just going to go ahead and fasten all of this down. So I just wanted to do a quick little glimpse of what this looks like on my porch. I also have this really cute little welcome sign that I purchased a couple years ago at a craft show. I'm really happy with the way that they turned out. I think they look really cute. They definitely don't look exactly the same, but I'm pretty happy with them. And I'm just going to show a couple of other things really quickly that I really like for my fall decor this year. So the first thing is this little happy fall sign with the little red truck on it. I found that at the Dollar Tree and I thought for a dollar I really couldn't pass it up. I also like how the outer part of it, um, the sparkly bit, is sort of like a coppery brown color instead of orange. I think it's kind of nice. And then over here on top of my little uh, stand that I have when I walk in the door, I have a little jar pumpkin candle. It does have a lid as well with the little stem on the pumpkin. Um, so I have that burning right now. And then this little thing was actually um, something that I used on my guinea pig as like a little tutu for Halloween. I think it's actually supposed to be a little hair piece. And we sadly lost him the summer before last. So 
I have that out sort of just to think about him. And then I also have this that I purchased about four seasons, seasons ago from Michaels and that holds three little tea light candles. And I think it's really cute. I love it that it's not too, um, like bright. I'm really more into the fall decorations versus Halloween decorations. Like I'm really not into the whole, like green and purple and black and orange like that color scheme i rather have the dark browns and the oranges just for fall and then on this little stand excuse the glue gun i had it out when i was obviously making the wreaths i have this little insert that i picked up from the dollar store a couple of years ago and it does actually rotate so if you put it outside that would be really cute in your garden as well and then i have this little plant that i picked up at the grocery store and i have it sitting on a tray um, that has a pumpkin on it and i bought that from the dollar tree and then i have just around the pot because it's in its original pot and i don't think it looks very pretty but i have this little ring that has leaves on it little fake felt leaves and that's supposed to be i guess for a candle or like any type of centerpiece and then these little leaves I thought were really good quality because they're felt, but they also have the little veins of the leaves stitched in. And I got a package of those also from the Dollar Tree. And then I made this little centerpiece and the little wooden box. Um, oh, it's really dark. So I also made this little centerpiece from the leftovers that I had from the wreaths that I made. And the little wooden box that I have it in is actually the um, bottom portion from a really old sewing machine that I had I'm um, just sitting in my basement uh, just the box on its own not the sewing machine <laughs> but without all the stuff in it you can see the little notches of where the sewing machine would sit which is kind of cool and then inside this I have these little mason jars that came with the little rim that has the little suspension for the tea light to sit in and I bought those all at the Dollar Tree as well and then I have on either side of it these really pretty sequined beaded pumpkins and I also bought those from the Dollar Tree. And I really like this, um, especially with the little three mason jars in there because um, underneath of the tea light, like I like that it's suspended. I'm not going to pull it out, but um, I was thinking I was just going to put regular mason jars in there and then drop a tea light down into the bottom, but I like that it's raised up higher and you could also, if you had just the jars out, if they were exposed, you could put filler underneath the bottom of that too for any season at all, or you could not put the candle in it and just put little um, fairy lights in it or something, but I like this idea. Uh, because it can work for any season. So for Christmas time, I can pull out all of these flowers, still use the box in the jars because nothing's really fastened down, which is why I didn't want to pull the jar out because I don't want anything to shift. But I can totally redo this for Christmas as well. And then that little orange ball in the background is going to be my next video. <laughs> so I'm going to do a fabric pumpkin tutorial. I think, but that's just a little overview of my box with my little glittery pumpkins on my black table. And that's it. So thank you so much for watching. Sorry that it wasn't a sewing video, but there'll be a sewing video right there coming very soon.